Taxis and hotels are some of the oldest business models around. Now they're being disrupted by an even older idea, sharing. Whether it's your unused room or a ride in your car, there are networks to help you rent what you have to willing customers. No middlemen, no regulations. So you can imagine established businesses around the world are trying to stop it because this new sharing economy is worth billions of dollars and is still growing. Chris Brown has our story. These days, why own anything when you can borrow it from a stranger instead? This is Shifu. Even the family dog. Yeah, he seems to be really comfortable around strangers. He, yeah, he love, he'll be anyone's pet. We're at Alicia Damani's condo in Vancouver. When I had time for him before, I don't necessarily have that time now. And um, he's so social that I feel like he needs to have people around him. And why not share him? He's such a, he's such a pleasure. She signed up for an online service called Part-Time Pooch, where instead of hiring a dog walker or using a kennel, she pays a lot less to advertise Shifu on a website. Well, let's go for a walk. Okay. Then dog lovers who either can't afford or who aren't able to have their own pet can share Shifu for a few no, hours or longer. For this afternoon, he belongs to me and uh, Hilary Henniger. I'm very much a sharing enthusiast. It's a model that would seem to work well for all kinds of things. Henniger already shares her car, her power tools. She often stays in shared spaces. And she says for people with busy lives, tight budgets, and who like the social aspect of sharing, it's a smart way to do more with less. I live a much higher quality life than I lived before. I mean, it's, Vancouver is a very expensive city, and sharing means I have access to a lot more um, things that I would have before. An explosion of online companies and services are now connecting people with underused assets to those happy to pay for them. And while the results are life enhancing for many, for others, it's a potentially fatal disruption to old ways of doing business. And the essence of hippie sharing was free. Welcome to the new sharing economy. Nothing is free. And no, there's not much about that that I have much admiration for. The epicenter for this new business model is San Francisco, where we visited the company arguably at the forefront of the sharing economy, Airbnb. Airbnb hooks up travelers who need a place to stay with hosts who have room in their homes. In just six years, it's grown into a $10 billion enterprise. Yeah, you wouldn't recognize it if you came here a year ago. I mean, I like to say every year it feels like a completely different company. In just six years, Nathan Blakarzik has gone from being an indebted university graduate to a 31-year-old worth over $1.5 billion. Basically, we built a, a platform that facilitates trust. I took just a quick search on Airbnb to find what I was looking for. A clean, comfortable, affordable place to stay. Airbnb takes a cut from both guests and hosts who then leave each other reviews. It was not a mainstream idea. In fact, many people questioned whether it was a business at all. I remember many investors we approached in 2008 thought to themselves, who would do this? I certainly wouldn't do this. And if someone were to do this, it must be a small market. Um, and clearly we've proven that wrong. Um, on any given night, uh, we have, well, in our peak night this summer, we had 425,000 people stay in other people's homes. And to think that just six years ago, none of that was happening is kind of mind blowing. Hello. Hello. Hi, Sandy. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Brought you this from my garden. Awesome, thank you. Hillary Henniger has a friend, Sandy Fleischer, who now lists part of his home online. Right, let's do it. And then uh, the suite is right here. Today, roughly 20,000 Canadians have their properties listed on Airbnb, and there are several thousand others on other sites such as VRBO, including Sandy Fleischer. Initially a little bit skeptical, but it's been amazing. As, as I mentioned, we've, we've been doing it since January now, and we haven't had one negative experience. His studio suite on the lower level of his home in Vancouver's commercial drive area goes for $90 a night. He's been fully booked. So it is putting some faith in humanity, um, and I'm really happy to say so far it's worked out really well. But connecting people who wanted to share their space was just the beginning. Suddenly, it seemed there was a market to share almost anything. 
Well, certainly our success has inspired a whole new uh, class of companies, and this is being called the sharing economy or peer-to-peer -peer economy, um, and uh, we think that's great. In San Francisco, the practice of getting around is utterly transformed. An astonishing 67% of taxi trips have been replaced by ride-sharing services such as Uber. It's a very simple experience, which is a big part of why Uber has been so successful among both riders and drivers. In a lot of places, you can already use Uber to call a regular cab or a limousine, but we used its mobile app to look for private cars in our area instead. And within two minutes, Nora Dean came to pick us up. To his surprise, we asked if he'd do a TV interview. No problem. This is first cheaper than a taxi. Mm -hmm. Second of all, it's, I mean, you get to see where is your driver. Using his own car, he says he earns between $1,500 and $2,000 a week. And since the fares are all paid online through credit cards, he doesn't have to track the money. He picks up anyone he wants, anywhere he wants, and takes them wherever they want to go, which is why the highly regulated taxi industry hates ride sharing. I don't see any reasons why they should keep on fighting this. I mean, this made things like the transportation business so efficient, so I believe people in San Francisco cannot be without Uber. And at the end of the trip, again, everyone involved gets to rate each other. So our trip was how much? That's uh, $15.99. And you gave me a good rating? Yeah, you deserved it. Five stars. <laughs> it was a great experience. <laughs> Increasingly, though, the success stories of the sharing economy are being accompanied by complaints and pushback, particularly in San Francisco, the city that's been at it the longest. That's the amazing thing about this whole sharing economy uh, phenomenon, how much the business model depends upon illegal actions, actions that are actually illegal. Meet Calvin Welch. He's San Francisco's most provocative voice against companies like Airbnb and Uber that use online platforms to upend traditional business and regulatory models. I met him in a poor neighborhood that's close to the downtown tourist areas. So there's about 19,000 of these units mm -hmm. in San Francisco. They're critically important for seniors and single, uh, single folks. And now what's happened? They're being converted uh, on the sly to Airbnbs. A San Francisco Chronicle investigation suggested two-thirds of Airbnb rentals in that city were not rooms in homes, but entire apartments, and many in areas where short-term rentals are restricted. There isn't a lot of hostility around sharing a bedroom in your house. It's when a limited and critically important supply of permanently affordable housing is converted to a short-term use, resulting in the eviction of a, of a uh, tenant. In New York, Airbnb's cheery ad campaign this summer was defaced amid similar opposition from poverty activists and regulators. It's equally incredible that Airbnb, a, a what, $10 billion business, based upon what? It's based upon charging fees for the use of its services. That's not sharing, that's a business. In Canada, from Halifax to Vancouver and lots of cities in between, Uber is in its own fight with local transportation regulators as it tries to expand its private car ride-sharing service. But Nathan Blakarzik believes it's not a contest. They and others fighting peer-to-peer -peer transactions online will win. So I think in the long term, everything totally makes sense and the right thing will prevail um, and the right rules will be established. What's hard is in the short term, there's going to be a lot of controversy. Perhaps due to the success of companies like Airbnb and Uber, sharing stuff is now something a lot more people are thinking about, says Hillary Henniger. And that's creating opportunities for community initiatives that aren't all aimed at making big profits. There are free pop-up libraries on street corners where anyone can borrow or leave a book. What do you do with a compressor? Uh, you can hook it up to a nail gun. And Vancouver's Tool Library, where a modest membership fee gives you inexpensive access to all kinds of pricey power tools. I'm of both minds. I see certainly um, 
how a company and its investors are profiting from very little investment on their on their own part. But also, you know, it's a solution. It's that community connection is actually really huge, and it takes the you know sort of um, the promise of the internet to connect us to our world. It actually brings it to real life. Very soon, she says. Even the term sharing economy won't really be appropriate. I think that it's going to get to the point where we don't even call it anything. It's just the way that we do everything. From homes to cars to pets and beyond, sharing is redefining what it means to own anything. Chris Brown, CBC News, Vancouver.